Woo M Cat. <laughs>、hey Guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. I'm a third year biomedical science and pre med student, and today I'm going to be breaking down all of the resources that I use to get a 95 percentile score on my MCAT exam, all while watching over 80 K d r a m a If you haven't seen the first two videos in my MCAT prep series, I highly recommend checking those out to get an overview of the process before checking this video out. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Before we begin, here's a brief list of all of the resources I use. Timestamps are included down below if you want to. Jump to a specific resource. Now let's get right to it. Starting off with review books, I bought both the Kaplan and the Princeton review books. It really doesn't matter what company your review book comes from, as most of the review books generally cover most of the material you'll need to know for the exam. Even though I bought both the Kaplan and the Princeton review books, I ended up only using the Kaplan review books. Princeton review books tend to go more detail heavy and more in depth than Kaplan. I really liked how Kaplan gave a very concise, to the point summary of what you really needed to know, as well as an Emphasis on a lot of the high U materials that are covered in the exam. Especially considering the MCAT is a passage based exam and tests you less so on the details you can remember, but more so on application, Kaplan is really good at getting to the point and showing you exactly what you need to know. On a separate note, I also found Kaplan a little bit more aesthetically pleasing in terms of having a simpler format and being a little less overwhelming in terms of the wealth and the breadth of material presented compared to Princeton. Kaplan also had really nice summary sections in the back of each of the The chapters from which I base my summary sheet wall notes that I'll be discussing later in this video. Now, on to practice questions. I can't stress enough how important practice questions are in your MCAT prep. In terms of QBanks for the MCAT, UWorld is considered the gold standard. UWorld is really nice because their interface is essentially identical to the interface that you're going to be interacting with on the MCAT exam. They also have really detailed explanations and break down each of the answer choices so you can understand why you got a question right as well as why you got a question wrong. UWorld is awesome because the style of the questions are very similar to how the AMC will ask questions on the actual MCAT exam. It's really nice to be able to subconsciously practice on the same interface so that you can eliminate all traces of uncertainty and unfamiliarity to be on your A game during test day. UWorld explanations really break the question down as not only a practice tool but a learning tool for any content gaps that you. May come across. A word of caution make sure to get the six month subscription for UWorld if you're planning on redoing questions. For my four month study plan, I bought the three month option, which didn't allow me to redo these questions. So when I was planning on doing two passes of UWorld, I ended up only being able to do one pass. Make sure you're purchasing the right option that works for you. Since UWorld questions are very similar to the AMC questions, you want to make sure that you're doing UWorld questions not too early, but also not too late. Make sure to work in UWorld questions at a time where you know you can be able to finish all of the questions, as well as at a time where it's not too early that you're gonna forget. Blueprint, or formerly Next Step, also has question banks available. I purchased the Blueprint question banks, but honestly used maybe a couple hundred before reverting to UWorld. Next Step questions are definitely more challenging than UWorld, as well as the actual AMC exam, so I found doing these questions to be discouraging more so than assistive in the prep process. If really looking to maximize practice questions, Jack Weston has amazing practice questions and they're all free. Previously, Jack Weston only offered CARS passages, but they've expanded to include all of the four sections as well as practice exams. Sections. Definitely take advantage of this free resource and integrate it into your practice. Jack Weston also presents an interface that is very much similar to the AMC interface. Though it isn't as sophisticated as the UWorld interface, it definitely mimics a test taking environment and allows you to practice questions that are styled similarly to the AMC exam. So, on to what is equally important to practice questions practice exams. Now, of course, the most important practice exams that you need to use are going to be the official AMC practice exams. I'll be discussing those more later, but now I'm going to break down some of the third party practice exams that I use in my MCAT prep. The first one I use are the Next Step practice exams. Right off the bat, I took advantage of the Next Step diagnostic exam. This is a half length exam that allows you to see where you are before you begin your in depth MCAT prep. I took this the first day of my MCAT prep. Just To see where I was, as well as to gauge how the questions are being asked, especially since, once again, it is a passage based exam and I wanted to know what I was up against before starting my prep. Next Step also has a free full length practice exam, so I definitely take advantage of using that one. However, a big word of caution is Next Step exams are difficult than the actual AMC, so when taking this, don't be discouraged if you see a lower score than you anticipated. Next Step offers a package of 10 full length exams, which I did purchase. If you're crunched on time, I do recommend only purchasing about six of the exams as 
because after the fifth or sixth exam, the exams start to increase in difficulty. There is a marginal benefit to completing all 10 full length exams. Being that next step is a little bit more difficult than the actual AMC exams, make sure that you're not holding yourself too much to the score you're getting and more so focusing on practicing to simulate test conditions. Since some of these third party exams are deflated, I use a website that compiled students' actual scores with what they got on these third party practice tests for a standard of comparison, which I'll link in the description down below. Princeton Review and Kaplan also have free full length exams, so I took advantage of those. However, if you're crunched on time, these are absolutely not a necessity and more so for practicing on once again, stamina and simulating test conditions. So now onto the biggest and most important resource of all, the AMC official prep materials. Now, if you're gonna buy any resource at all, you have to prioritize the resource that's coming straight from the test maker themselves. I bought the AMC official online bundle, which included practice exams, as well as a variety of question banks. There is a free sample test that is now available for students to take. And this is also included in the online bundle. These practice exams are MCAT resource goals. Try to schedule one AMC practice exam per week, leading up to the day of your exam. In total, there are five AMC official exams that are available, one of which is not scored, and four of which are scaled and scored automatically in the system. When you're taking these, make sure to simulate actual exam conditions. And I'm talking the exact time you're waking up, what you're going to eat, breaks, any other test taking day details to practice to the fullest for exam day. Now, of course, coming from the test maker themselves, these exams are going to be the most representative exams that you will come across. So you need to make sure that you're putting your all towards these exams. The scores from your exam will fluctuate based on the relative difficulties of each of the exams. For me, the average of all of my five exams put together was pretty spot on to my actual exam day score. Not only is the process of taking these exams critical, but you also want to treat reviewing the exams with just as much importance. I scheduled one day to take the exam, then the next day I spent the whole day reviewing this exam. Because once again, it's important to know not only how to get a question right, but why you got it right and why you got an answer wrong. Reading through the AMC explanations will give you insight just into how the test makers are thinking and how they're asking questions. You'll also be able to pick up on critical patterns, essentially worshiping all materials and information that you can get from AMC resources. I also also created Anki cards for any questions or concepts that I missed or was unsure of that came directly from these exams, which I dubbed my Anki AMC practice exam question deck. More on Anki later. Another really useful resource that's included in the AMC online bundle are the CARS diagnostic packs. But you're not going to find any more representative CARS practice than the official AMC prep product itself. So make sure that when you're going through these CARS questions, you're really absorbing how they're asking these questions and patterns of the CARS questions. Especially since the CARS questions is a hit or miss, Third party exams might not be as representative of how the AMC is actually going to ask these questions. So make sure that you're thoroughly going through the CARS diagnostic questions and taking notes of why you got questions wrong and any trends in erroneous reasoning. The online bundle also includes a variety of question packs, but a lot of these questions have been recycled from the 2015 MCAT, which was before they made the switch over to a slightly different style of MCAT testing. It's definitely important to make sure to get through these since they are official materials, but they're not going to be as useful and as critical as the practice exams and the CARS diagnostic packs. Time to address the elephant in the room. What is Anki? Anki is a super useful resource for MCAT prep if you know the right way to use it and if you're familiar with its features. Basically, if you're not familiar with Anki, it's a flashcard application that that uses the concept of space repetition to achieve active recall. If you're not familiar with Anki and want to implement Anki in your MCAT studying, make sure to look up a couple videos beforehand just so that you know the general interface and how to use it. So how did I use Anki in my MCAT prep? I used it mainly for content review. It's important to remember that Anki is useful for content review as well as reviewing missed questions and missed concepts, but the real practice and the real meat of your MCAT prep has to be coming from these practice questions and practice exams. Use Anki as a supplement to help you get down some of the concepts that you do need to memorize for MCAT prep. Now in terms of making your own questions, I would definitely caution you against doing this. I wasted a whole week trying to make Anki cards off of my summary wall notes and ended up not using them at all. There's some really awesome pre-made Anki decks that have been heralded in the MCAT community. You can find those in pre-med MCAT subreddits. Two of the MCAT Anki decks I use are, are the Milestone deck as well as the Ortho 528 deck. Anki is also good for mastering some of the equations that you just have to memorize, as well as acting as sort of note-taking by transferring all of your missed questions from QBanks and practice exams to Anki so they can review them and make sure that you've solidified the concept in your memory. Miles Down deck is around 3,000 cards, while Ortho 528 is around 4,300 cards. I found Miles Down to be sufficient enough, well, simple to read, and easy on the eyes, and a nice link since the majority of the Miles Down deck are based off of Kaplan readings and Kaplan concepts. So if you're using the Kaplan books, you'll be more familiar with the wording 
packaging and the formatting. 528 is a little bit more detailed. If you're on a time crunch, you can definitely get away with just using Miles Down. I definitely suggest going through only one content review deck. I definitely think that one content review deck, it should be sufficient for your exam. So I do want to address my summary sheet wall notes. These notes are based off of the summary sections of all of the Kaplan review books. So in total, I had 12 summary sheets, one from each chapter for each of the sections of the Kaplan review books. I only skimmed through the Cars Kaplan review book because for Cars, it's definitely more important to be going through those practice passages instead of reading about how to tackle these passages. Since through practice, you'll naturally be getting a feel for what strategies work best for you. Now, these summary sheets are a really nice reminder of all the material that you have to cover as well as high yield topics, and they're really nice for visual learners. But definitely, once again, don't prioritize rereading and rereading your notes as these serve as more of a reminder and reference. Remember, practice questions and practice exams are key. Another really great resource for MCAT prep is YouTube videos. I can't stress enough how important it is to get a general overview of what you're going to be tackling before you start your studying. A really great YouTube channel for doing just this are the Shemasian tutoring videos, which provide a really nice overview of each of the sections as well as tips for tackling and approaching each of these sections. They also have really awesome walkthrough videos so that you can get through the reasoning behind some of the top scorers. Khan Academy has some really great videos for reviewing the psychology and sociology sections, as well as any other sections that you may need a refresher on. AK Lectures also has really great videos on the metabolism section, which I felt were much easier to understand than just reading from prep books alone. The MCAT doesn't have too many in-depth detailed questions for the metabolism as are featured in the review books, but it's definitely good to get a general overview of the most important points in the process, especially focusing on those regulatory points and regulatory enzymes. I'll be leaving the links to all these YouTube channels in the description down below. An additional resource that many students have also used is the MCAT Bro Psych Soch Doc. Now there are two versions of this. There's a 100 page version as well as the 300 page version. Honestly, I think the 100 page version is sufficient enough. I did go through both versions, but the 300 page version is a little bit more detailed. And once again, MCAT is patches based and they're not gonna focus too much on the nitty gritty details. You may get one or two obscure questions, but for the most part, it's going to be focusing on your application. The Psych Soch Doc is really nice because it breaks down all of the concepts that you need to know for the MCAT exam and they're based off the Khan Academy videos. However, this is absolutely not a necessity if you've already been doing a lot of practice questions and you feel you've mastered the material from the prep books as well as the Miles Down Anki deck. Now we've gone over all the resources that I use. I do want to add a note of caution that your MCAT studying should absolutely be personalized to how you study best and how you learn best and it does vary from individual to individual. What's most important is that you find a study schedule that works well for you. Quality over quantity. I cannot stress this enough. One thing that I got into with MCAT prep is trying to use all of the resources that I heard were good resources. You don't want to get into the common pre-med trap of fear of missing out and trying to do all of the resources just so that you have a false sense of security. Finding a few resources that work well for you and sticking with those will not only save you a lot of time but allow you to more fully grasp the material. If I were to complete my MCAT prep again, the materials that I would for sure prioritize would be AMC official materials, the Kaplan review books, the Miles Down Anki decks, UWorld, and Jack Weston. If you guys made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching and make sure to share this video and the MCAT knowledge with any other pre-meds who may be preparing for MCAT. And let me know if you guys have any questions on MCAT prep or if you have any video topics you'd like me to cover next. Good luck in your MCAT studies and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!